Hi guys, welcome to Empower In. My name is Carolyn Porter Thomas. Thank you so much for watching. So I've been getting a lot of requests to do a video on how to do an EKG or how to examine an EKG for nurses. So I'm more than happy to do this video for you. I really hope that you enjoy it. Before I start this video, I just want to tell you that this video is pretty content heavy. If you are just starting out nursing or you're considering nursing or if you're just started nursing school, then just be patient with this. I want to encourage you to listen to the words in this video and to listen to the concepts. And then when you do go to class or when you do start your job, you'll have a little bit of a better understanding. So I really just want to give you like a general overview and hopefully this helps you and enriches your life. So let's get started. The basis for understanding the normal rhythm or electrical activity in the heart is essential. So let me show you a systematic approach that I use that helps me a lot. And this is a five step system. Step one, is the rhythm regular or irregular? Step two, is the rate normal or between 60 to 100 beats per minute? Step three, is the P wave present? Step four, is the PR interval normal? And a normal is between 0.12 and 0.2 seconds. And finally, is the QRS normal or between 0.06 or 0.1 seconds? It looks something like this. Here we see the P wave followed by the QRS complex finally ending with the T wave. The P wave is representing atrial depolarization and usually atrial contraction. The QRS deflection is representing ventricular depolarization and usually ventricular contraction. It is important to note that electrical activity that you see on an ECG does not necessarily correlate with cardiac activity. Therefore, you must always check your patient's pulse. So let's look at a normal rhythm or also known as normal sinus rhythm using the systematic approach. Step one, is the rhythm regular or irregular? At a quick glance, you can many times see if a rhythm is regular or irregular. However, to be accurate, it is good to use your calipers, which you can purchase at a medical supply store for just a few dollars. And when using this, you will see that what you're measuring is from R to R interval. Are they the same? This makes the rhythm regular. If they're not the same, then this makes the rhythm irregular. Step two is rate. Is it normal or between 60 to 100 beats per minute? When measuring the rate or beats per minute, there are two ways you can do this. You can count the number of beats on a six second strip and multiply by 10. For example, seven beats times 10 is 70 or 70 beats per minute. Or you can use this trick. By counting the boxes from the R to R event intervals using this formula, 300, 150, 100, 75, 60, 50. The trick for accurately doing this is finding one R interval that is on a prominent line which represents 0.2 seconds, then counting down to the next R interval. Whichever number the R interval lands on will give you the approximate rate. For example, I chose this R interval because it is close to the prominent line. Then I started counting down, 300, 150, 175, and you can see how this one is close to 60. So this would be around 60 beats per minute. The next step is, is there a P wave? Do you see a P wave before each QRS complex? Step four, what is the PR interval? Normally the interval is 0.12 to 0.2 seconds or three to five small boxes. It is important to look at a few PR intervals for comparison. Lastly, is there a QRS complex following each P wave? And what is the measurement of the QRX complex? A normal QRX complex is between 0.06 to 0.12 seconds or 1.5 to 3 small boxes. So now that we understand normal, let's look at some common abnormal cardiac rhythms. The first is atrial fibrillation. Using the systematic approach, let's look at this rhythm. First we see if the rhythm is regular or irregular. Clearly we can see that it is irregular. Then we see if the rate is normal or abnormal. Since this is a six second strip, let's count the number of R waves and then multiply it by 10. Here we get 100, which is still considered regular. If we get more than that or less than that, we consider the rate to be irregular. Next, let's look for a P wave. So here you can see clearly that there is no P wave, especially when you look at multiple QRS complexes. Next, you measure the PR interval, which since there is no P wave is not possible. Lastly, measuring the QRX complex you will see that this is within normal range, making it an atrial arrhythmia called atrial fibrillation. As you can see, the atrium of the heart is just quivering. Now let's look at another atrial arrhythmia, also known as atrial flutter. Using the systematic approach, let's look at this rhythm. 
First, we see if the rhythm is regular or irregular. We can see here that it is pretty regular. Then we see if the rate is normal or abnormal. Since this is a 6 second strip, let's count the number of RR waves and then multiply by 10. Here we get 90, which is still considered regular. If we get more than that or less than that, the rate is considered irregular. Next, let's look for a P wave. So here we can see that there clearly is no P wave and we see several sharp movements. This is what we commonly see when we are looking at atrial flutter. I think of it like bird's wings going up and down due to the sharp deflections. I hope that helps you. Next, you can measure the PR interval, which since there is no P wave is not possible. Lastly, measuring the QRX complex, you will see that this is within normal range, making this an atrial arrhythmia of atrial flutter. Next, let's look at some ventricular arrhythmias. The first is premature ventricular contraction. So let's use the systematic approach when examining this strip. Rhythm. Is the rhythm regular or irregular? You can see here that it is mostly regular. However, it has this strange thing right here that makes it look irregular. Rate. Is it normal between 100 to 60 beats per minute? So let's count the number of QRS complexes and we will determine the rate. Please note that even though this beat looks strange, it is still considered a QRS complex and therefore counted as a beat. Therefore, we have a rate here of 70. P wave. Is there a P wave before each QRS complex? Here you will see that yes, there is a P wave before each QRS complex, except this one where it appears that the QRS complex came before the P wave. PR interval. Is the PR interval 0.12 to 0.2 seconds? And here you will see that the PR interval does indeed look normal, except on that one beat that does not have a P wave. QRS. A normal QRS is 0.06 to 0.1 seconds. So here you will see that all the QRS complexes are normal except for this bizarre looking one that came prior to the P wave, making this a preventricular contraction. Now this next rhythm that I'm going to show you is a deadly rhythm that also originates from the ventricles. You will see this a lot on exams. This rhythm is known as ventricular tachycardia. Here you can see that the rhythm is regular. However, the rate is very high and it looks like a saw. Counting the six second strip, there are 16 complexes, making this rate 160 beats per minute. The next question is, is there a P wave? Definitely not, you cannot see P wave anywhere here. What is the PR interval? Well, there is none. Is the QRS complex normal of 0.06 to 0.1 seconds? And you can see clearly here, it is not. This rhythm is known as ventricular tachycardia, and it is when the ventricles are contracting too fast, and this does not allow blood to be filled and pumped throughout the body. This rhythm is deadly if not treated. So guys, I know that this is really complicated subject matter, and I also know that I didn't cover all of the rhythms, as there are tons and tons of rhythms, and there's also a lot of information associated with each rhythm. I just wanted to know if this is something you guys were interested in and if you liked this method of delivery. So if you did like it, then please give this video a thumbs up for more content just like this and post a comment also to let me know. With each rhythm, there are clinical manifestations, which is also known as patient symptoms, and there are also recommended treatments. So if you would like to see videos on that as well, please let me know. But this will give you the basis, and it will also give you a systematic approach on how to evaluate each rhythm. So I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, and please post a comment letting me know if you wanna see more videos like this, or, a different video and anyways I cannot wait to see you guys soon I love you bye